Hi everybody, welcome back to Happy Bake Day, where every day is a happy bake day. I hope you had a very Merry Christmas, and I also hope that your peppermint bark cheesecake from last week made Santa's nice list. If you missed that episode, you can check it out right here. Today, in honor of the new year that's just a few days away, we're going to be making a blood orange champagne creme brulee. But this is a special episode and we're going to be collaborating with Shine Dessert Glitter to add an extra sparkly touch in order to ring in the new year. We're going to be making this in a few different steps. Step one is to make a delicious vanilla sugar. Step two is to make that classic creme brulee custard. Step three is to make some delicious blood orange candied orange slices. And then the last step, the best step, Step, in my opinion, is to add that classic gorgeous sugar topping and we'll brulee it to create that nice crackle topping that gives creme brulee its signature crunch. What you're going to need for our first part to make our vanilla sugar are the following ingredients. Two cups of granulated sugar and one vanilla bean pod that has been split and with the beans removed. To make our vanilla bean sugar, I have brought out my food processor. I'm going to add my sugar here into the bowl of the food processor followed by the vanilla bean um, pod scraping and it'll go on top of the sugar. You're gonna pulse it about maybe 10 or so, 15 or so times until everything has been fully incorporated, the beans have fully broken down and been added to the sugar. Then what you can do is set your sugar aside. We won't be using all of it for our recipe. You'll be using about half a cup for the actual creme brulee custard part. What you can actually do is put it in a very tightly sealed airtight container and your vanilla sugar should actually outlast you for a long time as long as it stays in that airtight container and you don't have it in direct sunlight or it doesn't have any moisture inside and you can use it for other recipes or maybe even in your coffee in the morning. So we'll make our sugar. With our vanilla sugar done and ready to go, I did put some aside here to use while we make our custard filling. The rest I put in an airtight container. I did add the vanilla bean pod to the vanilla sugar. Over time, the pod will actually enhance the vanilla flavor of the vanilla sugar, so it will be delicious for later use. Now for our custard, you're going to need the following ingredients one quart of heavy cream, another vanilla bean split and scraped, half a cup of that delicious vanilla sugar we just made, six large egg yolks, half a cup of blood orange segments, two tablespoons of champagne, one tablespoon of blood orange zest, and half a teaspoon of plain old granulated sugar. Our first step is to marinate our blood orange segments so I have mine here in a medium sized bowl. I'm also going to add my champagne and my little bit of granulated sugar into the bowl with my segments. I have a spoon here to mix it all together. Then we're just going to set it aside and let it marinate while we make the rest of the custard. Next, we need to preheat our oven to 325 degrees. Our next step is actually going to be over on the stove. We're going to heat up our cream along with our vanilla beans and the pot. You're going to put it over medium to medium high heat and bring it to a full boil. And once it's boiled, turn off the heat and take your pot off the stove. You're going to let it sit and cool down for 15 minutes. Our cream has 
finished foiling. I have mine here off to the side covered. I did take the actual vanilla bean pod out and you can either save yours or throw it away, whatever you wanna do with it, but you do want to remove it from your pot. You can also see in the back, I have a pot of water that's boiling. I'm going to be using it to create a water bath for my ramekins before we put it into the oven. Our next step, you're going to need a medium or large bowl and a whisk. We're going to whisk together our egg yolks and the vanilla sugar until it's light and fluffy in color. Then you're gonna slowly, slowly add in the hot cream mixture. But again, you're not gonna start adding that in until about 15 minutes have passed and the cream has started to cool down a bit. Our creamy custard mixture has been mixed. The next step is to add some of our blood orange champagne juice here into the custard. I do have a one tablespoon measuring spoon and I'm going to measure out two tablespoons of the champagne juice and add it into my custard. We'll mix that really, really well and then it'll be ready to pour into our ramekins. So in order to get a stronger champagne flavor in my creme brulee, I ended up doing three tablespoons of the blood orange champagne juice. Feel free to do two if you don't want the flavor to be as strong or you can be adventurous like me and try three. I have here four little ramekins. The recipe is actually enough to make six, but unfortunately I only have four. But I put them here in a large roasting pan with deep sides. You can start pouring in your custard here into your ramekins. Make sure you leave a little bit of space at the top. So you could probably fill them two thirds of the way full. And like I said, I do have some water starting to boil on my stove and you're going to pour the water into your roasting pan. So that way it covers the ramekins about halfway. And with my ramekins, that'll be about an inch of water. If you remember our episode last week when we made our peppermint bark cheesecake, I'm going to put my baking, um, my roasting pan in my oven first before I pour my water. That way I'm not having to carry a heavy roasting pan full of boiling water into my oven. I also have here a large measuring cup that has a spout. I recommend you also pulling out either a spouted bowl or a measuring cup if you have one. I'm going to just transfer my creme brulee from my large mixing bowl into the spouted cup. It'll be a lot easier to then pour it into my ramekins without um, any drips or at least with minimal mess and minimal drips. And it will just be a lot easier for cleanup. is to bake our creme brulee in the oven. Our oven has finished preheating to 325 degrees. You'll bake it for anywhere from about 40 to 50 minutes or so until your custard is set but still jiggly. So my creme brulee is out of the oven and I have put it in my refrigerator to chill overnight. You do need to have it chilled at least four hours so that way it has been completely cooled down. I do recommend doing it overnight though, that way it'll be perfectly firm and set for when you want to serve it. Tomorrow we will do our candy blood orange slices, add our sugar top and it will be ready to eat. Until then, have a good night and we will see you tomorrow. Hi everybody, welcome back to our second part of making our blood orange and champagne creme brulee. Today we are going to be making our candied blood oranges to top our beautiful creme brulees. I hope yours baked well last night if you baked them overnight like I did. 
and I hope that they had set without any issues. I did take a peek at mine this morning and they look perfect. There's no more jiggle or wiggle. I think it's going to be great. So like I said, our next step is to candy some blood orange slices and they're going to be used as a garnish for our beautiful creme brulee. You're going to need a few ingredients in order to make our candied orange slices. Four blood oranges thinly sliced with the seeds removed. You'll want to have them 1 8 of an inch thick and I do recommend using a mandolin if you have one. You'll need eight cups of water in total, but you'll need it divided into two um, pots of four cups. You'll need four cups of granulated sugar, plus a little bit more for coating at the end. You'll need an ice water bath, and optionally, you need some edible glitter. Today, I'm going to be using Shine Dessert Glitter, edible glitter in the color of champagne, in honor of our blood orange champagne creme brulee and I'm super excited about this collaboration in order to kick off the new year. As you can see behind me I do have my pot on the stove. It is filled with four cups of water. I'm going to start boiling the water. Once the water is boiling we will add in all of our orange slices here and you're going to boil them for two minutes. Don't worry about mixing them around. You don't want the oranges to accidentally break down. So once your two minutes are up, take your orange slices off the heat and immediately put them into your ice water bath in order to stop the cooking process. Now it makes sense to put them into a boiling pot of water just for a little bit. It helps take the bitterness out of the rind so that way when we coat them in sugar and we'll bake them a little bit at the end, they'll get nice and chewy but also sweet and not kind of that tartness that the rind will typically have. <laughs> Our orange slices have been boiled and put into our cold water. I have mine set aside here. I also dumped out the hot orange water from when we boiled the slices, so that's uh, been disposed. The next step is to refill our same pot with four more cups of water. We're going to add in all four cups of sugar to the water and we're going to boil and you're going to slowly stir the sugar in until it fully dissolves and it'll form a simple syrup. Once that simple syrup has formed in your pot, what you'll do is drain your orange slices out of the cold water and add them into the simple syrup. Once you do that, you're actually gonna leave this on the stove for anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour, and you're going to need to stir it every 15 minutes or so. Be careful when you stir this. You don't wanna get it too rough or too excited because then your orange slices will break down. I have a wooden spoon with some spots on it. Um, I do recommend a wooden spoon if you have one, just because they tend to be heat proof, uh, especially when you're working with that simple syrup, it can get really hot and sticky. So I will be using my wooden spoon. After that, we will put our orange slices on a rack and we will put them in the oven to dry out. <music> It's almost time to pull the orange slices out of our simple syrup. The rinds are almost translucent, so I'm excited that it's almost done. You can hopefully see in the back, I do have two baking trays pulled out. I have covered the bottom of the baking tray with some aluminum foil and then put wire racks on top of that. Once my orange slices are done, I'm going to take them out of the simple syrup and lay the slices on top of the wire racks. The trays will go into the oven. We will preheat our oven to 175 degrees. At the 30 minute mark, you will generously coat your orange slices in some granulated sugar on both sides, and then you'll put it back into the oven for about another hour uh, to about 90 minutes until the slices have 
dried out completely but are still kind of soft and rubbery and chewy. At that point, take your trays out of the oven and let the slices finish cooling completely and then we'll finish assembling our creme brulee. making candied orange slices is a much bigger endeavor than I originally thought. As you can see, it's daytime, which means I stopped making my candy oranges late at night and it didn't make sense to finish filming this episode, so I started again in the morning. My candied orange slices um, turned out really, really well. However, I did end up changing my baking time and temperature quite a bit. I ended up baking them for about two hours and I increased my temperature from 175 to about 225. Your oven might be a little bit different. Maybe you need to keep it at the 175, but do it for a little bit longer. Really, all I did was every 30 minutes or so, I would check on my orange slices and see how dry they were getting. They started to get pretty, pretty dry, still a little kind of a slimy feeling from the simple syrup and really once I could tell that the rind had dried out even though the rest of the orange the um, the segment part was still a little wet um, I pulled them out completely and I let them air dry the rest of the night and now I have these really beautiful solid crunchy translucent delicious orange slices. And I think they're going to just be perfect on top of our creme brulee. We are finally at the part where we get to top and dress these beautiful creme brulees. I have pulled two of mine out of the refrigerator. I did leave the other two in. You only want to do the brulee when you're about to eat your creme brulees and you don't want to brulee it and then put it back in the fridge. So I just have my creme sitting here. Um, I'm going to make two today and then we will top it and decorate it with our candied orange slices. I have pulled my uh, custard out of the refrigerator about 30 minutes ago. You do need to pull them out of your refrigerator and let them sit at room temperature for 30 minutes, at least 30 minutes to kind of warm up a little bit before you do your brulee. Now I know the recipe says you'll use half a cup of your vanilla sugar per six um, custard uh, pots. But um, as I'm only doing two, that equals about a tablespoon and a quarter of vanilla sugar per um, custard pot here. So I have two small little um, cups of a tablespoon and a quarter of my vanilla sugar that we made earlier on in the episode. And I also have here some of my candied orange slices. The rest of my candied orange slices I have put into a airtight Tupperware container. I also added a little bit more of the granulated sugar just to the bottom of the container. And the granulated sugar, the addition of granulated sugar will help just take out any remaining moisture from your orange slices. That way they stay dry and chewy and crunchy and caramelly and delicious. So like I said, I've only pulled out a couple here and the rest of mine I have uh, saved for later, maybe some snacking and they're perfect. I did mention earlier this episode is a fantastic collaboration to get ready for the new year with Shine Dessert Glitter. You can see I do have my champagne glitter out today and I'm so excited to use it. We're going to give these beautiful orange slices a nice dusting of some glitter as well as the top of our creme brulees after they have been bruleed and they cooled down a little bit from the torch. 
I do have a small butane torch here that has an adjustable temperature setting that will help us when we brulee the tops of our um, custards here. So the first step, what we're going to do, I'm going to take the lids off. And we're going to evenly pour the sugar on top of our custard, spread it as evenly as possible. You can use a spoon or a spatula to help kind of spread the sugar around if needed. And then you will take your brulee torch. I recommend uh, not putting it on the highest setting. We'll use your brulee torch, don't get too, too close. And you're just gonna go around and around until your sugar starts to melt and get that beautiful brown crispy coloring. Just be careful, it's very, very easy to go from beautiful browned caramelized sugar to burned sugar. And so you just wanna go slow and just stop when you think it's just enough. Even if it's almost slightly less brown than you want, stop before it gets too burned and then it's no good. Once you've brulee your tops, they do the, the creme brulees do need to sit and cool down for about five or so minutes, which will be perfect and give us enough time to then dust our um, orange slices here with our glitter. The custard has been beautifully brulee. I'm very, very happy with how it turned out. I'm going to let it sit here for a few minutes, like I mentioned earlier, just to let the sugar completely cool down and harden and create that classic crunchy caramelized top that everybody knows and loves with creme brulee, hence the brulee. So what we'll do now is dust our lovely little orange slices and some of this glitter I think it's going to be super fine and super sassy for New Year's, especially with this really fun kind of champagne colored glitter. I mean, how perfect for our blood orange champagne creme brulees. of glitter on top of my creme brulee but because these orange slices turned out so beautiful I think I'm going to let them be the star of the show and have that beautiful touch of glitter and leave the creme brulees beautifully perfect as they are you can see them right here and instead what we can do is take a couple of these orange slices and then use them here to top our creme brulee. Thank you so much for joining me today and yesterday and the day before that, making these gorgeous blood orange champagne creme brulees with the lovely candied orange slices. I also wanna thank Shine Dessert Glitter for collaborating with me on this dessert. I'm so excited to break into it. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you had fun baking with me today. You can also follow us on social media or visit our website for this and all of our other fun recipes. I appreciate each and every single subscriber as you join me on this journey from banker to baker. I hope you have a very, very happy new year. And until next time, I also hope you have a very happy bake day.